Well, hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of At Home with the Willises. I am Nikki Willis, and... I'm Jameen at home. Of course, we're at home. But Mm -hmm. we also have a guest in the house today. We have Christian Bishop (laughs) here, and we want to know who is Christian Bishop. But first, you're at home with the Willises. So before we get started, I want to remind you to make sure you subscribe right there. Mm-hmm. Hit that button and make sure you hit the bell so that you are notified every time we upload new content. Now, we are well above a thousand subscribers and that's because of you guys. So thank you guys so much for subscribing. We are growing. We are adding to the Willis Team community. So definitely make sure you subscribe. Uh, make sure you share, make sure you like, and make sure that you comment. This is going to be a great episode, so I'm super excited. Uh, but let's get started. Christian! What's up, y'all? Thanks for having me, I appreciate it, guys. Uh, as a proud man. member of Team Willis, glad to finally be here. Yes! Mm-hmm. Thank you. Exactly. He made it to the Willis house. This is a big <laughs> oh, deal. Man. This is this is exciting. <laughs> we know you're busy. Yeah, no, yeah. I'm, you guys are busy, too. So yeah. To All right. So, Christian Bishop. I got to read the bio. Is that okay? Sure. Just like a short little blurb so we can kind of be all on the same page, you know, Mm -hmm. with everybody. Christian Bishop is a community leader, entrepreneur, father, and diversity advocate running for Nevada State Senate. You see how I condensed that into just one night? That was perfect. Yeah. Can you send me that? I'm going to use that. I'm going to use that. Thank you, my guy. Thank you. All right. So here at home with the Willises, uh, we like to talk about entrepreneurship. We also like to talk about building businesses. We also like to talk about family and all the things. So we're going to get into it, and we just want to know who Christian Bishop is. So uh, so Christian, can you kind of tell us about yourself? Where are you from? How did you end up in, in Nevada, the state of Nevada? Yeah, look, originally I was born in L.A., in okay. Los Angeles. My mom's single mom, four kids. Yeah. And, uh, she worked hard and, and sacrificed for all of us, and ultimately I was raised by a village. You know, yeah. I ended up moving to Florida, living with my grandma, aunts and uncles at a certain point. Everybody yeah. kind of took their turn and chance for me. Uh, my father and his side of the family didn't know I existed because his mm. father was racist. So yeah. they actually didn't, they weren't in my life. So I was about a teenager, mm. and that's when they got back in my life and, and ended up having an opportunity to go to boarding school. So I went to military boarding school, five mm. guys in a room. Oh, I still wow. have my headgear on, braces, <laughs> glasses. Oh, man. And I'm walking around. I'm a nerd, right? So uh, it was it was an interesting experience yeah. and um, ended up uh, coming back to California for college, uh, mm. worked two jobs, and uh, and then came move, worked my way out, out to Nevada to open up a studio, be a commissioner of a league at the Aria. Um, and now here we are living in Henderson with y'all. Nice. Okay. Cool. Commission at the league with the Aria. What was that job? So that one was interesting. So have you ever heard of like the World Series of Poker? Yes. And that poker content? So yeah. it's the same investors and owners who, who do that and make that content decided to invest in esports, which mm-hmm. is video games played at the highest level, which yes. is one of my passions. Yes. Mm-hmm. And uh, they brought me to be the commissioner of that league where we would put up $100,000 every month um, wow. and fly in the best gamers from around the world. Mm-hmm. And we built a studio at the Aria when you're driving up on the left. Okay. And we would make poker content and we'd make esports gaming content. Yeah, and that's, that's, what, that's cool. what we did. So I had a lot of blast doing it. That's so cool. Um, that This is really cool because this interview is actually coming after we did an interview at Vahalan, mm-hmm. which is an esports training facility here in Henderson. Yeah. Super, yeah. super cool. So make sure you guys check that one out. Um, it is super a super state-of-the-art facility specifically for gamers who want to get into competing and the professional arena. So very cool. This oh. is I, I like how this is all like flowing and, and things like that together. So um, so you're a gamer. Major gamer. And I didn't even know about that facility. So I'm actually Oh, gonna, I got yeah, we have to tell you. I'm gonna that. go stop on the way home mm-hmm. after this. I yeah. didn't even know about that. Yeah. Um, but a huge gamer. I've actually, you know, and originally my, my dad told me like go be productive, go outside and play. Mm. So I jumped in and spent the first eight years of my life in corporate America mm. because that's what I was supposed to do. Uh. Mm-hmm. Did well and then I went on TV shows and then I had enough confidence to go pursue my passion of video games and I yeah. made more than I've ever made in my life aligned with my passion. Which yes. Is, which is gaming. That's good. Got it. You said something's really uh, key here, being in alignment with your passion. Mm-hmm. That's really, really interesting. You also said doing something that you were supposed to do. <laughs> so um, I want to kind of touch on that for a second. Um, you got into 
corporate America. You worked in corporate America for eight years. What did you do? How did it feel? What made you like truly just finally say, okay, enough? Yeah, so generally for me, one of my core skills is sales, right? So mm-hmm. in skills, align roles, I love building a relationship with folks, building value, yeah. problem solving. Um, it's what we all do, right? And um, and I had an opportunity to do that and be really successful at it, but I found myself just chasing money. Mm. The next opportunity where you get a higher base salary, how can you earn more commissions? Um, and you're just jumping, jumping, and I was moving to company to company and not necessarily in love with the product. Right, okay. um, and I think we see that is when you're not in love with a product and you're selling something you don't necessarily believe in or really want to sell. Yes, it makes it a bit tougher to do the job. 100%. Um, and as you get older and more mature, and your relationships continue to grow, you really start to get really sensitive towards that. Where mm. it's like I'm not recommending this to somebody. It's something I really believe in. Right. right? Like, yeah. Or y'all don't have that product where it needs to be yet. Mm-hmm. Uh, I can't, in good faith and good conscience, sell this. Right. Yep. Um, at a certain point, you're just like, look, this isn't where I really want to be. Um, and eventually you look in the corner of that office and you think like, do I want to be that person in 15, 20 years? No, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't want to be that person. So it was That's time good. for me to move on. Now, how old were you during that time? Yeah, yeah. I was up until I was 26. 26. So 18 through 26 um, okay. is when I did it and was really focused on that side of things and mm-hmm. decided to just really change things up from there. Yeah, that was good. Yeah, so, you know what they say, if you, you can't sell what you haven't bought, so it's, it's tough to every day every year continually do something that you don't like 100% believe in and your heart oh, is yeah. not in. Yeah, it's like that waking up every morning, right? Like mm-hmm. that, it's one thing to wake up when you're motivated and you all know what it feels like to be driven to get it after it and get up and go. Mm-hmm. But when you're not and you're dragging yourself in the office, you know it's time to make a move. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Yeah. So when you decided to, to take the leap and leave, leave corporate America, was that like a big jump? Like, or was it, did you kind of ease yourself out of it? You know, I started like... um teaching fitness classes for fun and I would just do it for free like in the morning like four, like 4 a.m. and 5 a.m. weight loss classes because I really Ooh, want to four, start what? 4 or 5 a.m. <laughs> you still get up guy. like that? Oh you're a morning, morning guy? guy. Okay. I'm a morning guy yeah I go to bed but I'm in like bed by like 8. Oh so goodness like, you're 65. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm a night. She, uh, so. She's yeah. not a morning person. I am uh, not. Yeah, uh, I am not. It's funny. Like so, usually, like it's like it's just programming of where your sleep schedule aligns. Some people love yeah. the mornings, and some like the, the nights. And yeah. uh, I got a lot of creative folks in my life that are very like you. Yeah. Um, but I like my mornings. It's peaceful. It's quiet. And I always say I work a half day before the average person wakes up. So <laughs> at four o'clock I mean. in the morning, one hundred percent. People don't bother you early in the morning. You get a lot person. of stuff done. Yes. Wake up before the kids wake up. Yeah, Life you, wake up. As you can you see, know, he's the morning like person. That. I am not. But yeah. you said wake up before the wife wakes up. Am I too loud? Yeah. Um, you wake up like you don't have like the inside voice. You know, oh, it's like we're inside. True. Like it's like you know, you just wake up. It's like peaceful. Yeah. You might play a little calm what, music. You what, just wake up. I wake up, up on a hundred. She'll wake up and ask like the deepest questions in life, like in the shower, like yeah. you know, why are you trying to get dressed? It's like well, that's what. Yeah, <laughs> you know, I mean, hey, it's that. now. Now it's my morning. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, <laughs> sorry. You're a morning person. <laughs> Back on. Oh, by the way, when we're at the well, I mean, it's just this is what happens. Oh, this is we good. Just, this yeah. is good. I want to know more about that, but you know, <laughs> we'll, we'll come like, back to that. Right after okay. everybody loves Raymond, yeah. after that goes off, it's pretty much time for bed. After yeah, that. yeah. yeah. you must watch Everybody Loves that's, Raymond. He's been doing that for seventeen years. But anywho, seventeen. It's a great show. Yeah, we've been together for um, seventeen years. We'll be married sixteen years in August. Congratulations! Thanks. Guys. Congratulations. Thanks. What's, your, what's your favorite thing about him? He's really patient. He is very, oh, very patient that. with me. Yeah. I I see that. yeah. He does. He has to be. I test his patience. <laughs> so. Was your dad patient? Uh, I guess so. Where did it come from? Yeah, where did that come from? You know, I would give my patience to real estate. Growing really? up being an entrepreneur and being in real estate, you have to be patient because you have to be patient with building a business. You have to be patient with clients. Taking them from, oh, I got bad credit, helping them get their credit together. Um, so it's like, you know, in corporate America, or if you have a nine to five, you get a paycheck every two weeks. So I had to be patient to get paid, patient mm-hmm. to build a uh, business. So I think, I actually, honestly, real estate. I think it developed you, but I think you just, you're just a patient person. That's what yeah. I love about you. you just don't stop being patient. Please. When <laughs> you, when, okay, so then when does your patience run out? 
Um, when it's something that I'm super passionate about, yeah. or I have a firm belief on it, I'm I'm like uh, yeah, I'm a, my, I have a birthday coming up. I'm a tourist, so people say I tend to be stubborn. Also, mm. yeah. So I'm impatient when I feel like. Uh, something that I'm passionate about or something I really believe in is something or someone is going against that, then my patience definitely will what, right now. What does that mm-hmm. look like with him being impatient? You know, he, <laughs> the voice never changes. <laughs> 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 the voice never changes, but then he'll start to go like this. Really? This, yeah, when, you, when, you, when, he's, when he starts doing this, it's, he's, he's, Uh-oh. He's, di- he's digging his nails in. Okay. Me, yeah. I mean, I'm all over the place. It takes a lot to get. It does take a lot past though. that level. And you know, um, That's kind of what you see. A lot of people don't. You don't understand people's background, different uh, points of life that it comes to. So I had like the rough childhood, and she had what, what, what she thought was like the. the yeah, like a nuclear the family or whatever. Show, Huxtable, two parent home. I came from rough situations and things like that. So um, when you think about the grand scheme of things, like when you go through a lot early in your life, I don't sweat the small stuff. And some people, yeah. some to some people, some things are big, some things is small, but, um, you know. Compared to what you've been through. Yeah, compared to what you've been through. Yeah. yeah, it's like training for adulthood. Okay. I think your patience has rubbed off on me. It's good. You agree? Yeah, a little bit. Yeah. A little bit. Yeah. See? It's called growth. Y- yes. Well, you be around somebody long enough, you say you, you look like your five best friends, right? So yes. if you be around each other long enough, you start to resemble each other. But we have a good opposite thing going on. We do. Are you, are you how long have you been married? Well, we've been together eight years now. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So do you, like, ha- have you all rubbed off on each other? Like... Absolutely. You know, I find myself, it's one of the reasons why I'm running, right, for office. Mm. Um, her heart, her service, like her um, compassion certainly has rubbed off on me, mm. similar to you, where right? I've been through a lot of things that have, I say, have hardened me yeah. and made me a bit icy mm. uh, as you go through things in life. And uh, she's helped thaw that. Um, That's good. And it's a, so along with my kids, mm-hmm. you know, change your perspective. It's not about you. It can't be as selfish as you were able to be when you're young, right? That's um, true. And you go through that, and almost in some ways, you make it. You kind of got to have a little bit of a selfish moment, I think, to push through it, too. And yeah. focus on you and improve and do the things you need to do to get where you need to be. Um, sure. But, yeah, no, she's she's been big for me that way. Um, and I can, like, I'm more outgoing as well for her than mm. her. Um, she grew up, like, we're in New York and Brooklyn. Like, mm. uh, her family stuck together, tight-knit Puerto Rican family, so... Yeah. Especially out there on the block, you're not just talking to anybody, interacting <laughs> with anybody. <laughs> right. So it's like, a, you just she, focus what you looking at, son? Yeah, hey, for real though. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, for yeah. real. Like, like, like it's, it, that's what it's like. So you get insight. But she's like, but that's the kind of woman that I wanted in my yeah. life and to help raise my children. So yeah. Uh, not, and how many kids do you guys have? Three. Three. Yeah, we got three. Three oh. dinos. We call them. We go a dino family. Yeah. Aww. So we got, we got uh, two boys. Five, two, and then our our daughter. She's eight months. So oh my little, goodness! Little Rose. Littles. <laughs> oh, babe, don't you remember littles? Barely. Oh, are you ready for yeah. another one? No, no, we're good. No, no, shut we are down. no, no, no. We are shut, good. Shut down. Very, very retired. much retired on that. Retired. We are budding uh, empty nesters. Stay tuned, guys. Yeah. Never, never know. Never oh, say yeah. never. No, no, yeah, no. no we do, we're definitely gonna say yeah, never yeah, on yeah, this here back. podcast. The stride of medicine. I think twins are in the air. Sure. Love uh-uh. Is well, air thank y'all for joining us. Little do y'all know the love is in the air. Thank y'all for joining us. He's out. Okay, so, um, so you started. See, now we're gonna just get right back into it. You started by doing workout classes, weight loss classes, all the things. That's kind of how you started to. Come out of corporate America? Yeah, mindset-wise, right? Mm. So to go mm-hmm. back to that, thank you. Um, was thinking like, okay, I don't want to do this anymore because obviously I, I started feeling conflicted internally. Like I was mentioning, like, why am I doing this? What value am I bringing, folks? So I pivoted to that, and then I ended up wanting to improve at it and be like, okay, anything I'm doing, how do I get better every day, a little bit better, a little bit better? Um, and I went to Fitness Expo in L.A., mm-hmm. and I got to meet – some fitness people at the top level, right? And then for me there, actually, there was an arm wrestling competition, and I was like, that'd be funny to enter. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, I went to military school. We used to do that. Uh-huh. As an adult, it's not cool to be like, hey, bro, you want to arm wrestle me? Like, <laughs> <laughs> that's not a thing we do as adults anymore. Wow. Um, 
So I went and did that and did well, made it to the semifinals, um, and ended up breaking a guy's arm on stage. And uh, he broke it. He broke it himself. Really, okay. it's, it's the other person who breaks it, and you like look away, and you're like straining, yeah. um, and then it snaps. Ooh, and it doesn't yeah. take much pressure, but oh. and, and, and it's dangling there. Oh. And, and then I took and I raised it. No, 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 <laughs> <laughs> no. no, no. Um, so. but then everybody came. Pressed in the break yeah, point. Yeah, like, oh, and, uh, and, and that attracted actually the casting directors from The Bachelor in that show that moment um, and they were like we want you um, what so uh, that's how that's it started because I was trying to lead up to that I mm. want to talk about that too but you know sometimes we get like a ooh shiny we get we go all over the place sometimes we do. We so do. how do you feel about the um, the, the slapping the, the, is it I was a sport? just about to ask you about that the, the slapping, slapping bop, competition the slapping where you're just competition. knocking people yeah. out with the smack it's like on ESPN oh it's it's fascinating. Um, and then you heard Dana White talk about it. He didn't know that was going to be a thing as be as successful as it's been. Wow. Um, I mean, I don't really slap me like that, but like, right. could you do that? Could <laughs> I you could not. That's like straight concussion. I don't, I'm <laughs> I, some either. people's faces, they'd be all swollen yes. eyes and I'd be like, damn. Yeah. Um, nah, so it, it's, it's, it's a fascinating thing. And that's like wild about content is mm-hmm. you never know really what's going to work. And you just kind of like lightning. It hits when something actually just works. Yeah. Um, and that I think is what an example of that, that it's, so you take the arm wrestling over to slap. Oh yeah, for sure. Mm-hmm. All the arm wrestling. Yeah, yeah. I Dude, you brought some. If somebody breaks my arm, <laughs> <laughs> See, that's not a thing. Like I'm not gonna fight fair. I'm just not. <laughs> but that's a concussion. Like you know, boxing is like wrestling. sport and technique. You you hit, don't get hit, but you're going to get hit with yeah. the slapping thing. Well, you gotta hold on to the little thing. And it's a straight up concussion. They gotta have yeah. like. Well, you know the guy that got slapped concussion and like concussion. knocked the taste out of his mouth. Like literally, he now has a speech impediment. Oh, really? Because, oh, really? Yes, he was slapped so hard. I didn't know that. It's, wow. Yeah. That'd be I, a you know, if you seen him knock out, like ooh, yeah, ooh, that'd be kind of. Fun. So, all right, sorry. Right, let's get back to the okay. point. Yeah, We're trying to focus. figure out who is Christian Bishop. Who is really Christian Bishop? So, you you helping people lose weight. You basically like single handedly the biggest loser. You doing the classes <laughs> at the gym. <laughs> You do an arm wrestling competition, and they like. We want you on heartthrob. The we want you on the Bachelorette. Bachelorette. I don't know about the heartthrob piece, but yeah, they were like, "You're just colored enough to be on this show." Is what it was more like. I'm yeah. weak. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's you really that. So you saying you was affirmative action for the Bachelorette? Yeah, that's, exactly. that's pretty much what happened. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah so actually, funny enough, actually, actually, need some black people. So. Yeah, exactly. You'll do. So, actually, yeah, pretty much. And I uh, okay. made a Facebook group that was like just colored enough, and I'd invite all the. We were all mixed, right? Yeah. So all light skinned uh, folk, and it was like. I mean, inviting us, and it was just an inside joke, but it was absolutely true. Yeah. I mean, you that color so, enough. Yeah, I like color, color enough. enough. Um, I mean, yeah, you, listen, you see it, you see it all the time, and you, you see it in shows, you see it in corporate America, um, all the things. So that's going to be a good topic. We're going we're gonna to have to get into it, but. So um, what was that like, ahead. being on reality TV? I feel like, I feel like our podcast is kind of reality TV. I feel like you would do well on reality. You I'm would. Not, I would not. She thinks she's gonna be like all this wholesome. I'm gonna be wholesome. I'm gonna oh, be wholesome shit. for sure. Yeah. Oh, mm-hmm. I'm gonna be wholesome. You're gonna be pushing people in the pool. Definitely not. That's not me. How dare you? <laughs> Y'all both would be great. Yeah, could you? Could you? Well, let's get let's get spicy here uh, in, in the house. <laughs> could you? Uh, we'll go. We'll go this way first. Okay. Could you? Could you have that done a reality good. dating show? I think no. in my single days. Excuse me. Oh, sorry. No. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh-uh. Don't, don't speak for me. Okay. You're no. just old man. No, sorry. All right. <laughs> Couldn't do it. You know, I, back in the day, I used to watch, you know, it's a little bit of an age difference between us. I used to watch the real world back then. That was like the first oh, yeah. reality yeah, TV. TV show. Yeah, I think if I was single and I didn't have kids, I think I could be in one of those shows. Your, one, your one-liners would get you in trouble, though, most likely. No, Where that's what you, would get, get the you ratings. Canceled. That's no. what I keep telling you. Her you one-liners, get, holy moly. Did you get the girl, though? <sighs> I don't know. You got I don't a, know a game like that? Girl. You know, of course I mean, he got game. 17 years <laughs> later. <laughs> <laughs> of course <laughs> he got game. Hey. Look who he got. <laughs> <laughs> what, what about uh, you? Could you do it? Could I do it? Yes, but I'm not, I'm, I'm not about to be messy. I'm really not. I don't like that mess. Not so on purpose. It, it's funny you say that because mm-hmm. I actually felt a responsibility not to be a fool on the internet mm-hmm. uh, on on, well, on TV yeah. in front of ten million people. Like I was like, I gotta represent the entire community. Yeah. I'm not gonna be that 
you know, mm. I'm a catch a black guy acting crazy yeah. on this show. Um, and give So you that. really took that on and was like, not going to be me. I got to no. represent and all that stuff. Straight up. No, I felt that way. Look, you should see the DMs and stuff that comes through my social media. Um, Still? Oh, back then. Back oh. then. Not, not like that anymore, but like back then. Getting That's right. He's taking ladies, though. Don't start it. Yeah, well, we ain't talking like that, but then straight call me the N-word, right? Really? Yeah, it was like on some other stuff. Like, you're dating a white woman on national television where a lot of the audience is middle America oh, and Bible Belt. Yeah, it's yeah. about that. It's like, got you're, it. you got people that feel some type of way, um, and you get that energy, right? Mm. And a lot of folks, they, they look for a reason to discredit you, especially. Yeah. So they, they want a reason. And you weren't going to give them one. I try. I try hard not to. Yeah. It doesn't mean I'm impervious, and they still will find reasons. And I make mistakes too. Yeah. And I put myself in situations I probably shouldn't have. But mm-hmm. not on that television show, I'm super mindful of it, and sure. which affects you from a viewership, mm-hmm. right? You know, relatability even potentially, mm. because like authenticity and being vulnerable is a part of a superpower today. You see it with Cardi, right? Like people love that about her. I like that a lot about mm-hmm. her unapologetically yourself and being open and vulnerable that's the thing but for me even just growing up not feeling good enough because like my white side wasn't in my life like mm. I always wanted to be on point mm. make sure you you speak a certain way your education this and this and this yeah. mm-hmm. and look what we got here we oh. got this beautiful little place Nyla's just they're walking around everybody everybody sees her like just <laughs> I tried to pick her up earlier y'all and she growled and she's she, looking at me then Nyla look at her. move she out the way please she is giving me the she, eye she do, yeah, we just we don't pay attention to her. Everybody, everybody <laughs> on the Willis team loves Nyla, but we just don't pay her any attention. Y'all know my baby's a rescue, so. So you um, didn't get the girl, not to cut you off. So you didn't get the girl. Who said that? Oh, Damn. You did get the girl. No, I did. Okay. <laughs> uh, you did, you did I mean, spoiler alert. Like, okay. you know, you know, okay. yeah, but okay, did you catch feelings? I'm just curious. <laughs> uh, no, not really. Nothing. What? Good, good. Thank you. Not You're not in the not, situation not. right now. Okay. Is that what's called? But did you, Are you in a situation? Am I being messy? Is this a situation? situation is called marriage, yes. Oh, okay. Multiple it's situations. It's a Bo- beautiful multiple? situation. You got multiple? Oh, gosh. No. <laughs> gosh, see, man. I don't... He's still, he's still on reality TV. Yeah. Yeah. I see how they call yeah, you yeah, for yeah, the bachelor. No, no, no. I, okay, yeah, no. Look, so I got my heart broken in front of all my friends and family. Okay, oh, that's what happened. That's so and, sad. You know, and I was devastated. Um, uh. No, I was perfectly fine. Yeah. Um, we were good. Okay. So they, like, it's I'm a, like, really? But she, like, the thing is, like, she's, she, she was a cool girl. Like, mm. she's cool. Like, everybody on the show, like, they're casting people that have a lot to offer, right? Mm. So you got a lot of people that are really great, interesting people that it's mm. not hard to be like, oh, I'm one, down to get to know this person or go on a date. Like, yeah. sure. Um, was I going to be proposing and getting married? Definitely not. Okay. You know, so she show. wasn't even it, for real. For me, for no, you. no. I had I was going against Aaron Rodgers' brother, Jordan Rogers, too. Oh, and so like very early on, they were going to be a thing. Like, okay, you know, mm. pretty sure that. Was Are they together? Who is she still? Is she yeah, with she's still with Jordan. Oh, okay. Oh, really? Yeah, and he's okay. cool. Like he's okay. he's great. He's a really cool guy. I actually like him a lot. Okay. Um, I never watched that show, so I don't know a whole lot about that. You re- so the real world. So my dad, remember I told you about my dad was until high school. Then I got to go to boarding school. Mm-hmm. So the person that he ended up marrying. Was the creator of the real world? Oh, really? Wow. Mary Ellen Beanham. That was my stepmom, and she's the one that paid for me to go to boarding school. Gosh. So she was the creator of the real world, road rules, making the band, all those shows. So I actually, when he got back in my life, and I spent time with her, be, be watching casting tapes with her, mm-hmm. and watching the real world ones back in the mm-hmm. day. They're so funny enough. I know Full exactly circle. that show. Right. Then you end up on a reality show. Right. Interesting. And you see how it kind of comes together. Why I was also open to it because I lost mm. her when I was a junior. She had cancer. Oh wow. Okay. And I always felt guilty right. because I was like, she's like my guardian angel. And mm. to this day, I still feel guilty about it because mm. I was such a little shit back then. And she was my people. It's, okay. it's like um, right. she used she cusses now. She talks about me, but she cussed on the last podcast. So she's free game. Uh, yeah. You know what? That, that hurts your advertising revenue. You know that. <laughs> and oh, you well, talk uh, about getting me getting one little cancer. one little tiny word. Sorry, folks. Go Carry on. I'm sorry. Excuse me. Here at the Willis's, okay. um, but it's uh, you know it's um, <laughs> it was a thing where she, I lost her as a junior, and I was such like a certain kid, and I didn't appreciate what she was doing for me back mm-hmm. then. And to this day, now I was like I lost her at an early age. I didn't get to give her that love and appreciation for what she did for me mm-hmm. because she set that up and pushed my dad to get back in my life. It was her from that show. Funny mm-hmm. enough. So she wow. was like the guardian angel. Mm-hmm. And actually, that's my daughter's my middle name, Mary Ellis. Wow. So, yeah, it's something I could do now. Um, but funny, full story. Uh, mm-hmm. So would you do that now if they came out with the real politicians of Vegas? 
<laughs> Does it seem like uh-huh. decades ago? I, I mean, of course, you wouldn't be on The Bachelorette or nothing like that, but would you ever consider being on, like, if they did yeah, something you like that? I don't know, maybe. Like, it depends on, like, what we're producing and how it would go. Um, mm-hmm. I'm, like, open to on-camera stuff, but it's the devil's in the details, right? Like, yeah. who's producing it? Because that those shows, it was, like, air traffic control was back. They had was TVs everywhere. There was cameras everywhere in the house. The lights were on when I would sleep. Mm-hmm. Wow. Cameras were in the room. Cameras were everywhere. You don't even know where they are. They'd be, like, in the bookshelf, and it was everything would be produced. So it'd be like, yo... It's like the Truman Show. Yeah. You know, hey, you won't believe what he was just saying about you. Wow. So, and cameraman over there, what you were setting up earlier, told me this about you. <laughs> and then, like, over there, you get to pull, and then all of a sudden, you're being, like, puppeteered. Right. And things are getting manipulated. And that's not always the best environment to be in. Low sleep, and everybody's mm-hmm. drinking. Yeah. And so when you come in thinking you want to be on point, right? You want to, like, oh, I'm not going to be like that. Yeah. That's like Vegas. That's- Keep you up and... Act the fool. Yeah. No, they did psyche valves. They, yeah. they did psyche valves on us. Well, then, and see, that's the that's the reason why I wouldn't want to be on a show that at least that I'm not producing because I want to create. I want to have my control, Creative my narrative. control over. Yeah. Guys. Yes. That's it. Which is another thing we don't have. Mm. So, and you'll see it in content, as you guys all know. Go watch a clip and watch us talk, and based on the music that you put over it. Uh gives a different vibe and feeling to the audience and viewers. Mm-hmm. Yep. And and they do that a lot. Mm-hmm. So they'll, you'll be playing people and you're like, I wasn't even talking about that person, but they'll cut to you in the loop and it makes it seem like you were talking mm-hmm. about them. So yeah. it's uh and see, my group. facial expressions, they would get me every oh, time. And that's why you'd be great for it. You know, because the facial they'd be like, <laughs> <laughs> somebody be talking about something all sad and sappy <laughs> and I'm like, <laughs> mm-hmm. all right. So you like Forrest Gump under 40. Like what the heck? I mean, you've done, done been... so many things. So, so okay, so after that, I then like so ha- where does you 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 I don't want to like spoil it, but Twitch, where does Twitch come in? Yeah, so this? so Twitch came in um, after being in, after being opening the studio, and then I was recruited to be the chief revenue officer for an esports team mm. based out of London. Um, I, I love again games and games like nerdy games like MMOs, World of Warcraft. We well, won't get into it. I'll spare you guys at home, but like that's my thing. I don't know what that is. Yeah, it's oh, okay. Don't worry about it. It's okay. You I got a week. You see my week? Really. I got a week. Okay, well, no one hey, wants to hear about the week. Yeah, man. I got no the one vintage. wants to hear about the week. What do you play with the week? The, the week games, the tennis and the baseball. Yeah. Oh, you be getting it. Okay, we got a game over here. Now, mm-hmm. once my son got like eight, seven, eight, he took over the PlayStation and it was just a wrap after I, that. I take everything from us. But yeah. I got the Valhalla where I can go uh-huh. get training. And get my game back up to par. And go pro. Basically, our son's been beating the brakes off of him for quite some time. People used to and couldn't Madden beat me. You couldn't everything. beat me in Madden. Oh, God. Like, I was just throwing people off the stick. Throwing seven them off of the sticks. 42, now, like, oh, yeah. terrible. Oh, yeah. Terrible. And, you know, of course, it's, the, it's, it's broken. The controller won't work. It's stuck. That they controller the, was. That one controller the, was broke. Yeah. It was broke. Oh, man. Remember 07 Madden, Michael Vick? That's yeah. what I'm saying. You couldn't beat me. Chris McAllister, Madden rollout. It used, mm. to be, it used to be dope. But yeah, you know. Man. So, what's your favorite game? Mm-hmm. I like play. Like, I play on the computer now. So, like, oh, League of Legends PC. is a game for me. But I used to play console games like really? Madden, Call of Duty. Mm-hmm. Uh, I played these games too. But now it's like I'm a PC. Okay. You know, I'm going to be in a conference call, jump in a little game real quick when yeah. they can't see me. That's a real <laughs> gamer when you play on the PC. Yeah, but then I feel like people could tell I call it gamer talk. Because, you know, I'll be like, you'll be talking to me, and I'll be like, uh-huh, mm-hmm. And you might have asked me a question. Oh, well, one, one yeah. syllable. Yeah, uh, yeah. you know that slight pause, yep. and you can tell you're someone's like, not paying attention uh-huh. to you, and you're like, you're like, let me get off this sure. phone. Sure. This person is not listening <laughs> to me. Um, so, yeah, so, I did, so, I, so I did that, ran the team, and then, I, and then I launched a media company, and I sold it in 2019 to the Ohio Innovation Fund. And nice. then I was like, okay, after selling it, I started buying real estate around the country, about 14 different units around and then I was like, let me go back for school. Went to UNLV to get my master's, my MBA. Hey. I finished up my degree, undergrad, actually, during the pandemic. To get, oh. you know, to, and then I was like, the pandemic's happening. Let me go get a corporate gig again and see wait, what's wait, like. Wait, 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 wait. So I jumped You're going too fast. Oh, we got I know. Oh, I know. We got I, this. I tried no, to give we you, got you this. jumped so, to Twitch, though. Well, okay. I didn't know how, how far a, Twitch was in so, there. So, okay, so let's we gotta stop. Put a pause. We got to put pauses okay. in the story because you just like real estate, gaming, Twitch. Yeah. So how did the opportunity for the studio 
How did you get yeah. that opportunity? How did you get involved in that? So before I was brought over to build the studio and be the commissioner of the league here in Vegas, I opened a studio in an esports arena in L in LA. We had a hundred and fifty thousand square foot studio with fourteen sound stages, a couple broadcast trucks, and we produced feature films. TV commercials, music videos, all that stuff. And mm -hmm. then I built an arena there and we host like 15,000 gamers a month and we do events and we produce content, commercials, shows. Um, and that's why I was able to use it as a stepping stone, making nothing, sacrificing, not making a dollar for a year, putting all the money back into that studio, that mm -hmm. arena and the business. And then was brought over to go do this here because of my success there. Mm -hmm. Okay. Wait a minute, you, because <clears throat> we have a lot of entrepreneurs that mm -hmm. watch this show. For a year, you weren't paying yourself. You no. were reinvesting back into yeah sacrifice your studio. sacrifice big time wow big time sacrifice. and that's how I taking care of my mom my mom lived with me for ten years too really? and, that, and that was the beginning too right when we were starting to have our build our family and our first son mm. that's one of the reasons why I took the job to Vegas because wow. I was like okay I gotta I can't be as taking the same risk that I was taking before and now it's not just about just me right mm -hmm. so then so things adjusted you took the job here in Vegas. Mm -hmm. Do you, d does the studio still exist now? Yeah, you'll see it. It's got those gold card plates when you're driving up to the Ari right on the left. You'll see it. Love it. This okay, so cool. it's real similar okay. to the place in the uh, Luxor. That's the only eSports e place I've been in. Yeah. Yeah. Do you say geek? eSports. Oh, I thought you were going to call them geeks there. No, no, no. no, no. <laughs> <laughs> I thought no, you, we, like, we are, you were like, that's the only geek. You we, said we, that's we, the only geek, geek we, space. eSports. <laughs> oh, okay. I was going to say No, that. you guys aren't geeks. Or nerds? You don't think we're geeks or nerds? No. What do you think? No. no. I mean, y'all do y'all do get a little focused behind that screen. Now, but if you you wear a diaper, so you don't have to get up and go to the bathroom. <laughs> yeah, is, are you that so kind of gamer? Uh, I ain't that kind of gamer, but if you ask my friends this, right? So did you guys see Ready Player One? Would you plug yes. in? Would you plug in and go fully virtual? That is could? scary. And like, I watched that. If you read the book, I, I, the book right. is even better. You read the book? Yeah. Oh, of she's one of us. She's a nerd, y'all. Oh, one of am us. I? Okay. One of us. You know what? I'll take it. <laughs> um, but yeah, honestly, because I mean, yeah, they dive right into it, and. You know, you can also die and all the things. Like, it's it's insane. Do would you, you think, do it? Would I do it? Uh, I wouldn't be a fir I wouldn't be an early adopter. I'll say it that way. If it was proven, if you could go and you're taken care of and you could really be all, she sounds open to it, y'all. I kind of maybe would. Uh, you sound open to it. I kind of maybe would. Would he have to be on board for you to go to? Uh, no, he's all right. Oh, she's gonna leave me. <laughs> she's gonna leave me at home. Just well, leave me at home in every, home. In every day life. Just me up in a dining room somewhere. I'm good. She you know what I'm saying? I need a vacation. I'm just out. slump drooling. Yeah. Boring, just, too. <laughs> just, you know, flip me over so I don't get bed sores or something. Oh, I don't know. Man. I don't know. But, yeah. It, Ready Player One is a great book. Um, wait, wait, like wait, wait. I got to pause. I got to pause. My computer's about to cut off. Okay. Yeah. So, so uh, what were we talking about? Oh, uh, Ready Player One. Yeah, yeah right. you were talking about leaving him to go into the virtual <laughs> universe. Yeah. No, I, you know, because I need somebody to like watch my back while I'm in the virtual world. You gotta be out. You gotta. You would go into the metaverse. Yeah. What would you do? You plug in? Uh, for the right amount of money, maybe if I was getting paid or something. No, you earn money while you're in the thing. Yeah, I said for the right amount of money, I would do it. I tried to do go in the metaverse, and my computer got too hot. <laughs> I, I gotta get a. You game need a game. Computer. You had on your lap. If you can't have laptops on your lap, they don't have good cooling. I was on uh, Decentraland. This was like during COVID. I was like, let me go in and see mm -hmm. if I can. I tried to find Snoop Dogg's house on there. Really? Yeah, my computer started getting hot, so I had to get off. Imagine what his avatar looked like. Did you have hair in there? No. Okay. See, what my, I'm saying I would my, be. My hair is has gone to be. With I'm the make sure you were staying honest. Ago. Nah, that yeah. was that's been a long time. I would be. Totally different. So you you, you, okay. you you basically cashed out of the gaming thing, which allowed you to invest in real estate. Mm -hmm. That's dope because okay. we are involved in everything except for commercials. So we do property management, sales, investing. So mm -hmm. that allowed you to get into the real estate game. Now, who did somebody give you advice on real estate as a thing for you to get into? Or did you yeah. watch, you know, Flipping Vegas? Or how did you do yeah. that? Yeah, so for me, my dad was a commercial real estate agent, um, and I and I property managed um, through college, um, and I house hacked, and I Airbnb arbitraged um, apartments yeah. that I just rented, um, and did that before it got too hot, right? Before you were able to actually do it in 
be safe with it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and I still had early, issues, but yeah, early, early adopter. adopter. Early, yeah. yeah, but like I had apartments. Private regulations. Yes, and I, I had apartments <laughs> that we were like twenty two hundred a month in Westwood, LA, by UCLA, mm. and then I would make eight k a month on it wow. because you'd have families that were like, hey, we want to come in and book it for a month and pay their day rate and this and this, and mm. uh, it was going great. Um, but no, I, I was learning myself, and I was watching things like Bigger Pockets, right? Obviously, we all yep. know about Bigger Pockets and yeah. a lot Shout of out content. To Pockets. Yeah, yeah, and I was consuming Brandon Green and all those guys, and consuming all their content, buying books, and, and learning about it, and and even the econ finance side to understand depreciation, how that works, and mm-hmm. markets that are solid markets to be in from an appreciation standpoint. Um, right. And then just dived in, right? Um, ultimately, you got to get started, as you guys know, with one project, right? Yes. And just get going. Um, I always kept it a bit conservative, right? And um, one of my first was a quadplex um, mm-hmm. that I wanted to do. Um, and I just ran the numbers and saw it could cash flow, um, mm-hmm. and that would make sense. Um, Did you have to make any improvements when you purchased it, or it was oh, just already? Yeah, I bought a quadplex here, right? And y'all oh. know quadplexes oh, oh, in okay. Vegas. Yes. You know, right? But it was like it was like a class B minus quadplex, I'd say. It okay. was almost like one of the nicest quadplexes That's you can right. get in this area, yeah. in mm-hmm. Vegas, I think. Um, and every time that I'd get a, a vacancy, I'd have to go put in 25 to 35K into remodeling each unit. But, it, wow. but, but I felt a responsibility. I was like, I don't want to be a slumlord type, Good. you know, property owner. So I was like, I felt inclined. I was like, I can't put this back on the market looking like this. They would be right. busted. Yeah. You know? And I bought it for 460. Okay. This was like um, 2019. Okay. Um, mm-hmm. And I bought it for 460. And I put 25 to 30, 35K into each one, um, which is almost a dollar, $125 per square foot, okay. roughly. Um, and that's what I was able to do. Ooh, that's max work, maxed out. Um, and each one, and I did over the years and ended up selling last year for. Um, 850k yeah okay so a couple of years and um, very nice nice nice, profit. nice nice come up yeah and then you said okay cashed out on real estate now i'm gonna take over the world of politics <laughs> yeah well, how did that how did this come out so you got corporate job entrepreneur real reality estate. tv yeah and then you said i know i'm gonna run for senate how did you what made you get interested in politics so similar to y'all, I think we all know you got to have multiple things going on, right? Especially to make it today, right? It's hard with one source of income. It's hard with one source of things that you're doing. Um, you got to diversify yourself, develop new skills. Even this matters, right? Content creation, and building yeah. community, building an audience, and also giving back. And that's one of the reasons, right? What goes back to your question earlier about my wife. She mm. instilled it in me service and, um, and our kids. But it also made me look back in the mirror. And I thought of how I viewed my dad when he wasn't in my life. I still looked up to him based on his accomplishments and what he did for the community. I looked up to a guy that wasn't in my life mm. right, as a kid and was proud of what he was doing. I took pride in it as a kid. Yes. And that drove me to want to be like, okay, go back to school, finish your degree. It took mm. me 12 years to finish my undergrad degree. Really? Yeah. And, okay. I, and I finished it in the pandemic because I was able to do it online. But I was so disappointed in myself that I was like, I was one class from graduating. And wow. I, was, I was one class from graduating. I had a 1.9 GPA. Mm. And they were like, your GPA has got to be above 2.0 when you graduate. So wow. then I had to take two classes and get A's in both to get it above a 2.0. Mm-hmm. And and I did that. But I was just like, this is rough. So I went back to get my master's. And I did really well in the MBA. And I was like, what's another regret you have? And I was not going to law school. So I went and studied for the law school. And I got my first scholarship ever to go to Syracuse Law. And I did a JDI hybrid online. Mm-hmm. And it was all along the lines of accountability of myself, improving, getting better. So I could be more competent and effective leader, make better decisions mm-hmm. in business, mm-hmm. protect my family as well, because I've been through shit, right? Especially yeah. being black and trying to do things in the world and you put yourself out there, yeah. you become a target. And the more, the higher the stakes have gotten, the more sensitive to being capable and competent I've become. And along that journey of service and being an effective father um, and community leader is the Senate. So for me, I see, the, see it as being the next stage of my evolution in my life um, to like serve our community here at Henderson. And I see an opportunity um, to do a better job, um, frankly, than our current senator. Um, and you know, respect for Senator Buck, who's stepped up to serve and she's done the work. And her father, her, her husband, excuse me, is in law enforcement, so I respect mm-hmm. it. But they haven't gotten any bills passed in four years. Mm-hmm. Um, and if you can't, you've got to get things done no matter what. So um, well, it sounds like you've been able to get a lot done. <laughs> uh, yeah, so I definitely, uh, we definitely support you. Um, all the ac- things you've been able to accomplish thus far. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, you really like a, a black force 
under 40. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, so, you, you've accomplished. Yeah, yeah that's an inspiration to people, whether it be, you know, politics or just young men or young people coming up, um, all the things that you've been able to accomplish, man, I think that uh, the short amount of time that I've known you, that's a, a definitely a highlight and an inspiration so that somebody can look at you and feel like it's possible. So whether it's in the realm of the Senate with politics or entrepreneurships, um, that's a, a great, uh, you're a great source of inf- inspiration and, and we're proud of you. Well, I appreciate yeah. that. Thank you. I appreciate that. So I've got yeah. some questions for you. Um, and, and maybe you guys do, too. So if you do have questions for him, go ahead and put it in the comments below. We'll make sure we get it to him. Uh, because we want to, again, we want to know more about you. But what do you hope to accomplish um, as the Nevada's next senator? Yeah, so it's, it's a big question. And, like, you got to bear with me when I kind of answer it because I'll elaborate. Okay. But ultimately, mm-hmm. it starts with being effective. Um, and I, that's why I asked for grace in the answer because it sounds like a super simple thing, but when we look around in our world today, there's so much divide through politicians and leaders. Everything is so partisan, um, mm-hmm. either super left, super right, um, and there's a breakdown of folks that are just getting things done and solving problems for everyday folks and everyday Nevadans and people in our country. Mm-hmm. Everything's so divisive. Things are driven by social media. Everything's so sensationalized and clicks. Sure. I think we're all being manipulated by the media um, and I think we're all doing our best everyday citizens to just get through our lives and earn. So I want to be an effective leader that leans on my experience, but also my work ethic and the depth of my knowledge and the fact that I'm willing to put in the work to learn and understand the nuance in things okay. and the downhill effects of things and impact whether or not it's academic, economic development, driving additional industries to Nevada so we can diversify from hospitality, gaming, now sports, mining, okay. but let's lean mm-hmm. into things like aviation, right? Let's mm-hmm. look in. Let's look into more engineering fields, right, of how we can develop high-paying, skilled jobs um, so people can actually have a livable wage, um, union jobs, right, and support our union community, health care. You know, I, I hear stories of parents that got to travel to different states to take care of their kids because mm-hmm. we don't have the health care facilities here, which is heartbreaking to me. Yes. Yeah, devastating. we were just talking uh, about that. Yes. I, I, that's devastating, right? How are you supposed to deal with that if you got to have still earn have a job but then your kids in another state and you gotta leave them yes. like mm-hmm. I, just, I couldn't imagine right those things are unacceptable to me um i think about things like school shootings right mm-hmm. that's like my worst nightmare right mm-hmm. it's like our daughter experienced that at unlv so yeah, yeah. i'm very sorry yeah i'm very sorry to hear that that's like the worst right and i'm glad <laughs> that that was handled yeah you know um and credit to law enforcement folks that showed up and did that um, that's what we need to see from them the type of work um you know as well and that, that, that kind of stuff can't happen, you know, and I think through education system for K through 12 as well and post-grads, right? Our school system, we're ranked in the 40s. Um, why, if we're leading in gaming, hospitality, sports money, why not lead in education, right? Yes. right. Why not lead in healthcare? Mm-hmm. Um, let's aspire for greatness for these other things. And I believe in creating abundance. Um, I'm big on abundance and creation, but I also lead with empathy and I care about people. Yeah. So by through creating abundance, we can do a little for some folks, right? We can do something for people too, uh, to make sure that everybody has opportunity to eat and do their thing, um, and that we look out for our folks. Uh, we can, we can do it. So, um, <clears throat> so what's one thing that you that you can say? Once I'm in this position, this is how I'm gonna do it. Yeah. So it's a big question, and um, I don't have my mind on set on one thing to say clearly today to you that uh, that I'd do would be able to get it done. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think you'll see that I'd represent our community, um, especially black and brown folks. Um, it's a high level and a high standard. You can hold me accountable to that, mm-hmm. that I'm willing to do the work to be a collaborative partner that also brings folks up with me along the way mm-hmm. um, and does it hopefully with empathy. Um, and I want to be held accountable to do so to not gatekeep, right? To not mm-hmm. keep people out um, and not forget folks. Um, I believe in pulling people up, standing on shoulders of those before us, and then bringing people up along the way, uh, but being effective um, as well. It's really important to me. So okay. it's it's not just one person, though. This is the important thing. And why the answer is I want to be real about my answer and not make a big promise to yeah. you is because it's not just me as a state senator. You're just a part of the legislative body to pass bills, and <laughs> sorry, y'all, I just might be a much, it might be a bit for the audience, I'm just getting into this, but you pass it in the Senate, it has to go over to the Assembly, right? and you have half the senators in the Assembly, then the governor has to sign things into law, whether or not it's budget, if it's affecting criminal statutes, mm-hmm. whatever we're doing, 
So it's not just me on it. I'm just one voice that represents us here in Henderson, right? Mm. I'm just my, you guys be my constituents, right? Here. Yes. And I, my job is to be an advocate and a champion for y'all and do that. And that's what I can 100% commit to. I'm doing every day and being something that y'all can be proud of too. And be like, no, he represents us. Mm-hmm. Like truly he does. And he returns our calls. We can get a, we can get a hold of him. He actually cares about our community. Mm-hmm. That I can commit to. Um, and then we're going to vote on something. We're going to vote on it. And I always say it's not about just winning this race, but it's about effectively legislating when we get up there Good. and working together. So, Good. What would you say is a challenge um, that as you are running, as you are you know, in this journey, what would you say is the challenge? Yeah, the political ecosystem, you know, the establishment, um, politics, they, they have plans in mind of how they want things to go. People that are in power today, and mm-hmm. people that want to be in that position. Mm-hmm. Um, and as a newcomer coming in the space that has been a career politician, right? Um, I haven't been a lobbyist, but I haven't been in this political space. Mm-hmm. I come as an entrepreneur who I consider all of us problem solvers, right? Mm-hmm. We're helping building, we're doing the work every day, creating jobs for folks, educating folks, improving our communities. Um, it's a different perspective. And when you come in there, um, you disrupt plans that you didn't know about. Mm. and that puts you in certain positions um, that folks aren't always so keen to support that, mm-hmm. right? And they have their own agendas and plans. And what's wild about it is you're not aware of it. Right. So you don't know, right? Like you don't know, you don't know what everybody else is doing around you and their plans and stuff. So you come in and sure. that, that could be disruptive. Uh, sure. Yeah. So they could be like an unintentional disruptor. Yeah. yeah, unintended consequences kind of thing, right? Mm-hmm. Which is like, or the unknown unknowns, yeah. right? Things Got we don't it. know. Yeah. Uh, it makes a lot of well, sense. yeah, I mean, people have plans from, you know, four years ago. Okay, you're going to be in this position and blah, blah, blah. And then here comes Christian Bishop, who's <laughs> got all these ideas. He is in the community. I mean, we, we I follow you on social media. You are literally at people's doors, visiting <laughs> our neighbors, you know, all the things. Mm-hmm. Um, what was the one I saw uh, playing the organ? You know, yeah. one of our neighbors playing mm-hmm. the organ. And I say neighbors, meaning um, people here in Henderson. Yeah. Uh, playing the organ. I thought that was really cool. Um, he just wanted to show you and show us, um, you know, a little bit about his world. And you've got people that are already in position, already in office. They're like, who is this guy? You know, that is shaking up things. That is, you know, shaking up the system. I, th- I think it's pretty cool. You know, it, it makes everybody stand on their their, their toes, right? It makes yeah. people, you know, get on their P's and Q's and really be about business and really be about serving the people. Um, so... I appreciate that. No, yeah. I, I appreciate that because that, that means a lot to me because that's what you deal with and that's what you get from me is yeah. like the work. The work sets me free. It's my relentless work ethic mm-hmm. and pursuit of the opportunity that I want to go about and ride for my community as well. And it's like, you're not going to bully me. I don't mm-hmm. get bullied no more, right? Mm-hmm. That don't happen, right? Mm-hmm. Like, um, as a kid, it's like your thing. helmet off years ago. Oh, 100%, right? <laughs> like, those, you know, you say the black for his gun. I don't know, it's kind of boat legged just like him, too, but those things are over. Chasing after me, them braces coming off. Right? <laughs> but, like, it ain't like it once was. Yeah. But, for, but I take great pride in that, right? Like, mm-hmm. I built myself and everything I've accomplished is to not be like that. It's like, I'm not the one, mm-hmm. right? So it's like, I've done a lot of things in my life where it's, um, you know, it's also our democracy. Yeah. Everybody has a right to run. People 100%. have the voters decide, right. not right. a select few or people in positions of power because that's how we get into problems. Mm. That's It undermines our democracy. So it's um, regardless of what political sides you stand on, mm-hmm. um, you know, we can disagree on issues and you won't have our vote, my vote. And that's all of our rights to exercise. Um, but I'm big on that. So I'm that's big cool. on just, you're going to have to beat me. Um, they're going to have to beat me and they're going to have to outwork me. Mm-hmm. Um, good luck. Yeah, I saw you said, um, someone said that your work ethic was uh, off-putting. Yeah. I thought that was interesting. A current legislator said that to me. A current legislator said that to me. um, And they're dealing with some really rough stuff right now. Mm -hmm. Um, If you knew what they're going through. But the things they said to me was shocking. Wow. Yeah. You know, that's one you just, I would grab that one and walk that one with pride. If my if my work ethic is off putting to you, if that if that is a turn off for you, then I must be doing something pretty good. Then. Yeah, I must no, be I, doing I, something right. It's one of my favorite compliments. Yeah, in that, in that, I, love it. I, I love mean, it. so how do and I didn't mean to cut you. Were you gonna say something, babe? Well, I was just gonna say to like button things up and kind of okay. round things okay. out. <laughs> the reason why people should consider you and 
the way that you want to earn people's votes yep. is one, you're willing to put in the work. Two, you're actually putting in effort to actually get things done, and um, and you you bring a a fresh perspective. Yeah. So that'd be a good way to put it in, kind of like yeah. writer's term. Absolutely, yeah. And I always say relentless work yeah. ethic, right? I'm relentless about doing this every single day mm -hmm. um, to pursue it. Um, I don't need their money mm -hmm. either, right? Mm -hmm. So we talk about being above reproach. We broke the fundraising record in the state, beat all of them mm. without their money, without special interest money as well, which has wow. never been done in this state. Mm. Not wow. a single dollar from them without their support, which they were intentional about blocking my support as well. Mm -hmm. Don't need your money. And I broke the record and beat all y'all anyways without it. I'm gonna that's, outwork you. That's a shake up for real. Yes. That's yeah. a huge shake up. I'm gonna outwork you. And I don't look like y'all. Ain't never been a black senator in Henderson before. But what Henderson looks like this, y'all. Yeah. Like, we coming, right? So yeah. that's, that's right. It's, uh, that's right. We're more diverse than people realize, yeah. Henderson. And then right. they talk about it. And um, that's the different thing, too, that people underestimate and they sleep on us and what we're doing and put it in the work um, to build here. Yeah. Um, and the difference is also my background as well. I have mm -hmm. a, a different perspectives and my life so far that I've been able to bring in, you know, experiences that help shape me in my decision making, but also gives me empathy and understanding for people that also come from different backgrounds too. Mm -hmm. So we talk about connecting with folks and being able to engage and have meaningful conversations with people. It comes from these experiences that I've had yeah. um, and even my formal education, mm -hmm. right? Um, all plays a factor, you know, when you think about that too, both my mm -hmm. MBA and law degree. Yeah, so good. So how do people support you? How do how do our neighbors support you? Yeah, so the number one way is right down here, guys. Be sure to like and subscribe. Hey. <laughs> this hey video here. There you go. And uh, <laughs> tune in and comment below, which <laughs> matters incredibly. You guys got to engage and make sure you watch this right. whole video yeah. uh, and stay on for that watch time metric for YouTube and support the Willis's. My that's dude, a, my guy. Good job, yeah. That's yeah. The number one way, guys. <laughs> um, and uh, and then after that, I think it's uh, your love, your energy, right? Your support. So feel free to engage on social media, content, whatever you guys do. Um, it actually does matter, right? Mm -hmm. We talk about it, and everybody says that in these videos, but engagement matters because that's how these platforms work. Yeah. That's how these platforms choose to display the content to other people because they want to give content to other viewers and recommend content that people want to watch. That's the right. indicator of quality content, right? Yep. So that's a win for any of us making content um, is your attention, your energy, and time. So thanks for if you made it to this long, this far in the video. Thanks for that. Because uh, it matters a lot. Um, but you can check out our website, you know, yeah. christianbishop.com. And if you're here in Henderson, we welcome you to show up, come to our events. Um, I door knock every day, wow. right? So um, every day I'm on the community, I'm getting darker and darker and darker. You are. <laughs> you got a nice little tan on you. Yeah, and yeah, it's getting hot, too. Yeah, yeah, hot. It's getting hot, really yeah. hot. <laughs> it's getting hot out there. Actually, you got a little break, I think, coming up Yeah. in the in the when? weather. But when? Uh, this, this weekend. Wait, what is it going to be? Like 75. Oh, let's go. Oh, yeah. yeah you should be all right. <laughs> but definitely take your water anyway. Uh, but listen, anybody that gets up at 4 a.m., you know, definitely has a wonderful work ethic, a great work ethic. Uh, I'm super excited to see, you know, what you're going to do for the community. Um, I'm super excited to follow your journey. So make sure you follow ChristianBishop.com. Um, social media. What's your social media handle? Yeah, you can check it out. Christian Bishop on Instagram. Uh, okay. At the bottom of the website, it links to all my socials, too. We're on everything. So Twitter, Perfect. Facebook, you'll see us. and. We're out there, and I'm, I'm, I'm documenting my grind and the work I'm putting in every day. That, awesome. That's why my social media strategy is just documenting what I do. Yep. Um, that's the best I got. Cool. Well, thanks so much. All right, you want to get into these current events real quick? Let's get Let's into get the into current events. So okay. speaking of light skin getting darker... Yeah, oh Lord. See, <laughs> do you see how we're about to get canceled? No, nah, you see this? I just did that to get a rise Lord out of you. So Lord, first of all, Lord, Christian, Lord. are you a hip-hop mm. fan? Are you more... Country or you R and B yeah, you classical? Mm. Yeah, I listen. I listen. I listen a bit of everything, right? So, like okay. for me, like top one hundred, my my playlist has everything on it. So okay. it's got it's got hip hop, it's got rap, it's got country, it's got a little bit of everything on there. Okay. And what you got for me? So, one thing I want to talk about is is Drake the Thanos of rap right now. So you <laughs> got right now you got all these disc records going back and forth. You got Kendrick Lamar. Uh, Metro booming. J. Cole. J. Yeah, J. Cole. Cole. Yeah. But he's out though. J. Cole said, I'm sorry. He I apologize. He bowed out. Yeah. Interesting. Um, do you feel like this is good 
for rap or do you feel like this is a bad look or are, do you feel like it's good because it brings the competitiveness back up? How do you feel about it? I think it's good for rap. Um, I think it's I think it's part of the culture. It always has been. Um, it's people enjoy it. People enjoy the the, the drama and the, the competitiveness. Uh, it's interesting. Mm-hmm. People say J Cole took an L with the apology uh, when that he did it. Uh, I like J Cole. I, I think like J Cole. I think it's something alignment. about J Cole. I just can't all the way get with. I'm a He's big I, now. I am a big Kanye fan, and, and yeah. it's, sometimes yeah. it's very hard. To be a Kanye an, fan. He's an anomaly. This man over here from Ohio. Yeah. <laughs> quiet. In the crazy ass Kanye. Yeah. yeah. I, I, I'm into That's it. That's my man. I'm going to stay beside he, 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 <laughs> talk, he talked bad about Kanye. That was bad. One bad thing. But it's just something about him that I just can't, I can't 100% get with him. And then he's like, my bad. I apologize. I feel like he shouldn't have never started it. If You know what I mean? Like, he's I'm not going to get into right the beat game. spirit. He's a, I'm not gonna get into the beef know. game. Um, the only way I could rock with what J. Cole did is the only thing that concerns me is I'm from like what I feel like when hip hop really catapulted Biggie, you know, that New York, that, that that New York West, 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 you know, West Coast. like real beef, like where people actually died. So the only thing <laughs> that, that I can like maybe. get with is from a J. Cole standpoint, maybe he was thinking like. What if this gets beyond music and it starts getting into for real personal lives? Other than that, I wasn't really with the whole apologizing thing because everything, in my opinion, like I said, I come from Nas, Wu Tang, Outkast, like, you know, it's just like hip hop is like real soft right now. So I like the diss tracks and the beefs because it's like everything is so. Soft and nice and everything, but I don't like the if it gets beyond music. Point. Yeah, look, there's there's a place I think for both, right? So mm-hmm. like I like J Cole because I think that's J Cole's space in it, right? J Cole's that guy that was a lyricist and he's rapping about things that are different. It's like a poet in a way. Mm-hmm. He's coming at you about some food for our soul stuff, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You. yeah. And yeah. even Kendrick had a little bit of it too. So it's funny yeah. that I didn't. And I thought, yeah, it's very interesting. Those two. Yeah, they're they're both similar that in that way, right? Mm-hmm. There, that I've seen yeah. them both being like food for your soul type of artists. Yep. And I don't think it was ever gonna get personal. Ain't no be no Suge Knight. Level. You know, you they ain't gonna know. be like Shug. Well, What's funny enough, he's over there from prison. You see his concert now that he's coming out. <laughs> oh, like, Fifteen it, minutes at a time, yeah. they gotta hang up, be <laughs> like, <laughs> and call <laughs> back Shug. <Yeah. laughs> <laughs> <laughs> yeah. like, Three Shug. minutes. Yeah, they like that, like how it was with like Pac and Biggie, like Shug and all of that, and, mm-hmm. and, and crazy what's going on yeah. right now with P Diddy. But like, it ain't, it ain't like it. It's a whole different world. Yeah. But that kind, of, I think it's just entertainment, right? So it can't so take you it too see seriously. You don't see it getting outside of music. But then, no, we drink, drink. Yeah. No, Drake. You know, Drake. I feel like it's, it's something that we don't know. Like I, I get it. Drake is on the top spot, and I kind of compare Drake to like the New England Patriots. He good. I'm just tired of hearing him. Like, okay, gosh, like I'm just. He got some hits, some stuff that I may play over, but it's like, you know how like you have a little gap. It's like no gap. It's just music, music, music. That's why okay. like Chris music, Brown. Chris Brown's doing the same. He does the same thing. And yeah, it's hard to like. I don't, Chris Brown I don't, came out I with a diss track. I don't listen what to a whole happening? Chris Brown album. He's got forty-seven songs on there. I don't have that much time yeah, in the day to road listen trip to you forty-seven and songs. And still so be yeah. I think for all these people to come at Drake, I think it's something that we don't know, or just like I'm just tired of. It. I, it's like the Patriots. I want somebody else to win the Super Bowl. I'm tired. Hey, you, you know how it is, though. It swings like that when you yeah, when you're super likable and you over here giving everybody their flowers and you Mister, you're very well liked. Eventually, mm-hmm. swings the other way. Which yep. Drake was doing that. He was going on his tour, getting everybody their flowers. Sure. And he was coming back. And you remember, don't forget where he started, though. Mm-hmm. On that Lover Boy stuff, Drake was hated on in the beginning. Very much yeah. so. And until so he had a moment Very where he much. came back and everybody, he was all collabing with people like Future and he yeah. was on everybody, Future, Future, Future. Everybody. And stuff. Wayne, and he got embraced. And now you're seeing a swing, but like everybody knows. But did you hear what Kanye said about him the other yeah, day? I did. Talking about having, he wanted Drake to write for him more. He's like, yo, I had Drake writing for me. He's like, he said that Drake is actually gifted. And Kanye is that type of artist who's gifted. Yeah. Like his grind through Chicago. I don't know if y'all watched the Netflix um, piece on him. Oh, I was I forced to, yes. yes. <laughs> don't but like, say forced. I don't like the word forced. I was 
told to definitely watch it, <laughs> and I had to sit there and watch it. Well, it's like it's like if you if you if you black and you never watch like Boys in the Hood, like it's just certain things you should you know watch and like know, like you know black card revoke type thing. You yeah, so so you would have revoked her card if she didn't watch. He said something about this is gonna be Black was History it good? One Day, and then y'all. Was it time. good? Was it a good documentary? Yeah, it was fine. It was good. Okay. It was fine. All right. It was fine. I just. Did mm-hmm. you fall asleep? No, I didn't. It was. It was. It was fine. It was fine. It was mm-hmm. fine. It was good. It's getting but harder and harder to support. I think that uh, I'm a big a- advocate for mental health, and I think that I'm not uh, no way like canceling yay or anything like that. But I think a lot nobody stands to benefit more of mental counseling than than yay. Even though I'm still a big fan and a supporter, but I feel like his impact and uh, the inspiration and things. Um, the negative stuff, I don't want that to get overshadowed because you, you look at everybody. Like, we were just talking about Bill Cosby and stuff like that. Like, you can't, I don't know uh, everything of what happened with that situation, but that was like such a big inspiration to when I was little to watch oh, the, the Cosby. Cosby show. Oh, you talking about throwing Is the baby it? out with the bath water? <laughs> don't throw the baby out with the bath water? What? That's, that's your one line. That's what that. you're saying. Yeah, I guess so. Don't throw the baby out with the bath water. Yeah, you, mm-hmm. I mean, so that's, it's tough when you have, like, we have a limited amount of, not role, I guess for lack of better words, role models, but it's, it's tough sometimes because a lot of our role models, our heroes, our people, um, you know, when stuff happens, it's like, dang, you know, yeah. now we're supposed to cancel this person. We're supposed right. to not listen to this or that. So it just gets a little different. But you hit on something big, right? We've actually seen that with a lot of our role models and heroes, mm-hmm. right, through the years, mm-hmm. right? Especially yeah. in our community. It's yeah. been a thing, right? The list goes on and on. Mm-hmm. For sure. So there's something to be said about that, right? Not to get into specific specifics of individuals. Yeah. Right? yeah. But I think we see it yeah. across our community. Yeah. Absolutely. We um, had a, an episode a few weeks back about mental health and about just, you know, speaking up. Uh, for people that have problems and getting them the help that they need. And mm-hmm. um, in the black community, mm-hmm. you know, it's 2024 now. We are just now, my mom, my mom is a, is a uh, licensed therapist. And we're now as a black community starting to, you know, talk more about therapy, talk about mental health, um, and be open about what's going on in our household so that we can be whole, so that yeah. we can, you know, be effective, so that we can, um, you know, have families that are, you know, functioning better. It's not like we don't, but in our culture, it has been taboo to talk about mental health and things like that. So, um, how did we get so super deep? We were talking about rap know. beefs, and now we talk well, about. Well, he mental started health. it. He said, you know, something to be talked about. When you say something <laughs> like that, man, of course we got. Okay, moving no, on. It's, moving it's, on. It's, it's a real thing. All right, yeah. so. Um, Next topic is, and this is something that um, I took my deposit back. I said, mm-hmm. give me my deposit back. So Wait, you, your deposit? Yeah, you yeah. put it in a deposit? Don't worry about that. We're just doing COVID. Don't worry about that. So Tesla what? recalls what? Cybertruck. Do- your, you put the, in a, te- which, a deposit for a Tesla? It was which, just 90 Which account did you use? Huh, don't yeah, I'd don't love to know. It. Don't worry about that. Oh, we don't have some that. things to talk about, Christian. Okay. I was doing the pandemic. Tesla recalls Cybertruck due to an accelerator pedal that can stick. Tesla has mm. been ordered to recall nearly 4,000 of its Cybertrucks due to an accelerator pedal that can stick in place when pressed down. So when you mm-hmm. apply too much pressure on it, it gets dislodged. It, Boom. Can, it, it can fly off. So you mean to tell me, after all these delays in the Cybertruck actually coming out, and still, if you order one right now, they don't give you a delivery date. They just say, they say it's coming. Just wait. They didn't say how many Cybertrucks that they re- came out with so far, but they're assuming it was like nearly all of them. Um, this is big because Tesla, I just looked this morning and saw Tesla drop the, their prices of three of their models mm. <laughs> because this is vast. Um, I like the Cybertruck, yeah. and I consider Quality getting control. one because it looks different than everything else um, on the road. Um, and I miss having a truck. Like every time you need to move something, you gotta be like, "Hey, can you come pick this up for me? Can you go do this?" 
Um, so I use the family account to make that deposit. It's a little wild. You see what he did. It's a little wild. Yeah. You see what he did. Oh, do you? Are you a Tokyo driver? No, I'm not. Oh. I do. Oh. What? Interesting. What? But you don't have. You, you, you don't have. A, no, I have a Tesla. I have a Model Three. I'm glad oh, you made the okay. deposit. What? What you gotta say? About <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm just saying. You know, I'm not. I'm not a fan of Tesla. I'm not. <laughs> but um, and I definitely Ooh. didn't want that truck. But so I'm glad we got the deposit back. I like. But what do you? Truck. You know, what do you think about? about uh, what's going on in Tesla world. Yeah, if you want to go here, we can go here, Let's y'all. Go. All right, then. So, so, so first off, okay, cool about the truck, right? The truck is, is a movement and it's a moment, but it's actually doing exactly what Elon does and Tesla does. Mm. It's taking over culture. Mm. And here we are talking about it. Yeah, that's true. And they don't spend a dollar on marketing. Yeah. And they get us to do it for free. Everybody's yeah. rocking with it, especially in our community. People love it. You see artists talking about it. Yeah. Um, people love it. So it's working. Yeah. Genius. The bigger thing and bigger angle about Tesla isn't the cars. Mm, it's the okay. technology around autonomous driving and what that's going to be, where we aren't going to be driving anymore. The cars drive us and they're all autonomous. Mm -hmm. And that Tesla is mapping the roads and the technology using machine learning mm -hmm. and AI to be able to have that experience. I have it on my Model 3. They just enabled it for me. I wasn't going to pay that 10K. Ooh. So they enabled it. <laughs> I was not going to pay 10K <laughs> for a full autonomous drive. I was like, are y'all crazy? That's what that was, that's they oh try to smack gosh. me for 10 racks after smacking me for more before the price reductions. Oh, yeah. Every price yeah. reduction, yeah. I delete that email so fast. I'm like, <laughs> you don't want to see it. I'm like, are, are you kidding me? I just I bought, bought mine before these the last six price reductions. Oh, so man. my car value just continues to plummet. Of course. But they gave me a beta, and they said, for 30 days, you get full autonomous driving. It actually works. Really? I do it, and the car drives itself. Jeez. You don't for, like the feeling of not being in control? Yes, you can talk about control here. See, mm, see right. you made you watch that Kanye. You see what I'm saying? I didn't I see make. What you're saying. Strongly no, I'm encouraged. Strongly you know what? encouraged. Strongly, guys. I know what you mean, and there's a moment for it, my man. Like, you, I definitely do take over driving, mm. but the fact that you can actually enable it, and the car does drive itself, mm. and I can jump on a call, or yeah. I can do what I need to do, yeah. is fascinating. Wow. And you think about it, where we're going with that, that one day, like, you actually don't need to drive. And you think about what that does to traffic, mm -hmm. what that does to reduce accidents, potentially. Mm -hmm. Whereas if everything is organized, everyone's driving the way it's supposed to be. Yeah. We actually might have a net positive. And then how does that affect robots? With the same technology, and you think of, and then now in robotics, and having robots in houses, and in homes, and in factory lines. Mm -hmm. That's what te Tesla's setting themselves up for. Yeah. Of the future of robotics and automation. And that's why it's a crazy company. So the Tesla truck, cyber truck is cool, but mm. to me, like my mind's on where they're going mm. um, and thinking in the future of being like, wow, uh, and the price, six price reductions they've given on my car. And my car <laughs> you're completely, definitely thinking on that. And it's completely upside down. Man. <laughs> so you're thinking big picture. Oh, yeah, always thinking big picture. But And then we have a big factory, Tesla factory here in Nevada, right? Um, and we actually one of the big miners of lithium for the batteries right. mm -hmm. in Nevada. Yes. yes. And one of the few. So, again, it's one of those things that we diversify ourselves with in this state mm -hmm. that makes us special that people don't really know. Um, but, yeah, we got to get y'all some Teslas. Okay, I'm all right. We test drove the Mercedes. Uh, I like that one a little bit better because when I, I rented a Tesla to see if I would like it, I didn't like the, the like braking. The even when I took it, yeah, 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 even I when like I took that. it off, I still felt it. it but like the Mercedes, the EQS, it didn't. I didn't feel that braking. And I know it recharges the battery and stuff like that. Yeah, I thought the whole recharging thing is whatever. Like, um, the thing that's most convenient about it is. Here, here's an interesting question. Mm. Who pumps your gas? Do you put gas in the car? Um, sometimes. For the most part, he does. <laughs> exactly. So. so imagine never having to go to a gas station again. Mm. That's what it's like when you drive the, these electric cars and this Tesla. We literally mm. never go to the gas station. Mm. It's a fascinating thing. My wife be talking about it. She's like, yeah, babe, I forget. And I, we, we do have both. But I also believe huh. in having one of each because I don't you want to pull. You got to have that backup. Yeah. You got to have that backup yeah. gas. Yeah. Cause I'm going to keep that old Benz yeah. in the garage. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to keep that fully, old gas. I ain't ready for that. <laughs> I'm fully going to be relying on them. Um, one, it's not going to need gas in it. Okay. Yeah. So, it. so it's nice having that, but she forgets when she go drives our Tahoe or something to check the gas gauge because it is nice. 
Mm. You just go home and boop, plug it in, and you never have to go to the gas station again. You know, get an oil change, right? Or get an oil change. Yeah, yeah. I like that. No oil change. Like, but so there, there's your, your savings right there. They said it looked like Ikea Computers. furniture. Like, if you look, really look at the components of, like, a, a Tesla, it's they're not. They're simple. Like, they're very, super yeah, simple. they're very simple. They're, I that, like that, though. But it's that's the, com- it's the computer. It, that's what, it's, the, like you said, it's the technology. That's the manufacturer where they actually designed it, though, so they, that they can actually make it in solid parts. They don't have all the little parts like they do normal cars and they have mm-hmm. to put them together. They actually like mold them in blocks so they can pump out a lot more of these vehicles. Mm-hmm. They actually intentionally do it from um, an engineering standpoint. Yeah. It's genius about Tesla. Yeah. And that's yeah. why they'll solve this demand problem. I think that's part of the game for them. It's kind of like clothing drops. Yeah, they don't mind the hits. Yeah. Because it'll, yeah. They're yeah. just eating it now because then it's going to. They're doing it. This is, uh, the pedals, people are dying. They're like people with autonomous driving, like in vain when they test this, like people are dying in these cars. Mm-hmm. Like the, the stuff that goes on, there's a lot bigger problems for them than just the pedal. Um, yeah. But I mean, it's just and they said it's thing, more though. accidents in Teslas than any other vehicle right now. Oh, I didn't well, know. Well, here's that, the thing though. I mean, you, you kind of got to look at what they're, they're measuring because Tesla's been out for much longer. They have a lot more vehicles, things like that. So I would, I would need to see the whole study on it. I think it, I mean, the speed thing may be a thing because um, you go from zero to sixty in like point five seconds, mm-hmm. in, like you know, electric. Like, so you may have the tendency to speed a little bit more because you like I'm gonna live get up it. and go. Yeah, yeah we I'm know. Oh my goodness, she don't need it. No, and she no, got what's the not. thing you got? Huh? Comfort Plus or Booster? Yeah, um, when I get that. Oh god. Oh yeah, we get a oh, sport. 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 Plus. Oh, sports, sports Plus. Sports, oh, yeah. I can't do that anymore. Who drives? Who drives if y'all go together somewhere? She complains about my driving all the time, <laughs> but she don't want to drive. Complains what all the time. Be- well, because he, he easily gets lost. So Tesla, so like, work out going? the bugs, work out the bugs in the cyber truck. Yeah, I'm going to get gonna the pay cyber for the, truck. The autumn, the she, you can be in the back negotiating mm-hmm. deals. You know, I'm going to have to don't drive. Mind don't and, mind it. And we'll be good. And I can still go to Home Depot and pick up. How should you get lost going places? Mm-hmm. You know, I've been a realtor for what? How long? Twenty five years now, but yeah. I have the worst sense of direction. Now that's one thing yeah, I admit. It's horrible. I have the well, worst. We met, he was but using did Mac you West you ever got things. into a car wreck with me? Um, did you die though? <laughs> did you <laughs> die? No, <laughs> no, so no I don't have a. I die? don't have. A, I get. A, I got a bad sense of direction, but I'm oh. not a. Uh, well, you get lost. A reckless lot. driver, <laughs> but you get there safe though. For the most part, All right. yes. That's what I'm you know, seventeen kind of like years. Zero <laughs> accidents. You don't got everywhere safe. Now I made a turn the wrong way. A couple times. Yeah. Yeah, a lot. Yeah. Okay. And still be on time. You we're gonna pay for the if we get a Tesla, we're gonna pay for the package, the the automated driving. That might not be a bad idea. Yeah. For you're me, you're at home with the Willis system. Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. Okay, one more thing. <laughs> one more <laughs> one more thing. Um the the thirty million dollar development coming to Vegas specifically Henderson, uh, called the Cliffs. You heard about it? It's a one hundred thousand square foot retail center uh, that's being renovated over in Henderson, like right behind or not right behind, but right in uh, Green Valley. Um, what do you think about that? It's supposed to open summer twenty twenty five. I haven't dug into it. I okay. uh, haven't read everything about the, the Cliffs in particular, but I did hear about the development. Uh, there's a lot going on, right? Yeah. So you mm-hmm. look at like even the Cadence area. Yes. You look at we got the rave saying we were talking about a lot of development and growth in Henderson. It's actually what I love about us. Like mm. this is one of the top ranked cities in the country. That's right. Right to be in, um, and we're doing amazing work. Um, and I want to be a part of helping. Right. It's like yeah. imagine if our senator was actually contributing as well to get things done for the city of Henderson. Mm-hmm. The city of Henderson, our mayor, their team, they've done a lot of great work in the economic development team. But, like, man, if we were all pumping and, and, and moving in the same direction, it'd be great. But I love that kind of stuff. Yeah. One of my slogans is Bishop Builds. So I'm a big believer in it. Um, I want to see more of it. I love it. Nice. All right. Well, I think we got to wrap it up. Yeah. Uh, let's see. I'll wrap it up with uh, our real estate minute of the day. So if you are renting, I want you to listen up. Um, I saw a post not too long ago, and it struck me. And it's one that I want to share with you today. So if you are renting a typical three-bedroom home, specifically here in Las Vegas, it could run you on the higher side of $2,500 a month. And maybe that might be cool. But if you are renting and you're thinking about becoming a homeowner, I want you to listen to these words. $2,500 
$1,000 a month. In five years, you will have paid $150,000. $150,000 of someone else's mortgage. Now, those are big, staggering numbers, and that's something that I want you to remember. If you are thinking about becoming a homeowner, and then you decide not to make a move. Home ownership, guys, is um, one of the best ways to begin to build wealth, um, wealth generation for your family. And just know that every time you are paying rent, you are paying a mortgage. You're just paying someone else's. That's your real estate minute of the day. All right, guys. Jeez. Yeah. I was making, most most billionaires in the world come from real estate. Come from real so estate. Not only are you paying somebody else's mortgage, but they also get all the depreciation offset their income from a tax standpoint. Hundred mm-hmm. percent. If you earners, why are you going to pay the government them taxes? Every yes. year, I buy real estate just to offset my tax liability. Yes. Buy real estate, or pay taxes and give your money to the government. That's good stuff. That's a that's a that's a, a mic drop moment. Thank you, Christian Bishop, for helping the real estate minute of the day. You gotta keep That's that right. in there. All right. Well, guys, thank you so much for joining us on this episode. Uh, thank you so much, Christian Bishop, for oh, coming to the yeah. Willis House. Yeah, sure. L- little, little Willis team craziness I love it. here. I love it. <laughs> but um, tell us again how we can find you on the socials. Thanks, guys. You can come check me out on Instagram at Christian Bishop or visit the website ChristianBishop.com. We've got all our socials linked down below at the very bottom. Thanks, Absolutely, guys. Absolutely, 100%. And all his information is also in the description below right here. Make sure, especially if you stay this long, you got to subscribe. Come on. You got to be part of, of the Willis House here. Uh, but thanks so much, guys, for joining us, and we will see you next time.